Hello, welcome. There's something going on here that we'll talk about later, not in this video, a different video. Today I wanna show you guys how to edit a slow motion B-roll sequence, which is walk through how I edit, my thought process, and then a couple of tips and tricks for you guys to take away when you're editing your B-roll sequence. So I am gonna go to public and I'm gonna get a latte, probably a matcha, and film some B-roll, and then we'll be back. Let's go. I could get away with doing this on two separate days, but apparently public has run out of white cups. <laughs> uh. Shit. But in all seriousness, what is nice about editing at this desk is that I can wear sweatpants. Basically, we're in a tuxedo. Okay, anyway, let's get into this. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to edit a slow motion sequence, cinematic sequence. We'll call it B-roll because everyone is calling it B-roll. If you are new to slow motion B-roll and you wanna know how to actually shoot and like convert your footage to slow motion, what the frame rates are, what the shutter speed is supposed to be, we actually did a video on that, so I'll link it up here. Check that out first and then come back and watch this video. There are a couple of things to think about when you're putting B-roll in your vlog or in your video. First of all, it should either tell a story or supplement the video in some kind of way. So it should help the story along, maybe time passes, maybe a certain activity happening, maybe you wanna show details, but it should have some sort of purpose versus just random clips in your vlog that have nothing to do with anything else that you're doing. Uh, the second thing is you should pick a song that works with the mood. If you shot really beautiful cinematic, you know, B-roll and time lapses of say the sun coming up in a really epic landscape, then you pair that to like a really hype track, then that might not really work. Maybe you wanna have something that's like a little more cinematic and slow and moody to kind of capture the feeling of morning sunrise. Alternatively, if you're shooting something, say like skateboarding and it's fast paced, you're gonna to wanna to pick a song that matches the mood or the feel of those clips. And the other thing to consider when you're picking music is pick a song that has good cut points. So what I mean by that is, you know, a good beat, instruments that are hitting at a certain time that you can kind of cut up to if that's the look you're going for. For the B-roll sequence you guys just saw of me going to get coffee, I picked kind of an upbeat song. There's a lot of moments and instruments that I'm able to cut to. And just think about dynamic edits as well. Don't just cut on the beat so every single clip is the same length. Actually listen to the music and what instruments are actually happening beyond just like that beat. You know, there might be a percussion hit or there might be like a sound effect or there might be like a voice that would lend itself really well to an interesting edit. So just think beyond just that normal beat. I started thinking about this when I started dancing. Uh, when I started dancing and started freestyling, I started to listen to the music and break it down per instrument in my head. You're not just dancing on the drum beat. You could be dancing on any other instrument. You could be dancing on the vocal, the hi-hat, the bass, whatever. Think about the song more deeply versus just like cut, cut, cut. The first thing I do after I import my footage and set up my timeline is I watch every clip through and I set my in and out points for the best parts of the clip and I just send those down into the timeline. And I do that for all of the clips that I shot for that B-roll sequence or for any vlog. Once I have my choice clips down into the timeline, I'll watch them and I'll trim them up. They're shorter, they're more succinct, so when I lay my track down, I'm not going through a shitload of footage, I've kind of cut those down and curated those a bit. And sometimes I find when I go back, I might have like three shots of coffee pouring and the last one is the best one. So just ditch the other ones. You don't wanna to be too repetitive. Uh, you wanna get a number of different types of shots uh, to make your edit a little more dynamic. Man, I've been really into like matcha lattes lately. I go through these like phases with hot beverages and still in the morning, I like my coffee, but like midday, I've been doing like iced chais and matchas. So good. Boom, boom, boom. Next comes the fun part. The next thing I do once I have all my choice clips in the timeline, things are cut down and things are a little more succinct. I put my track in and I pick the track based off the vibe of the video. This story is kind of like, I left you guys to go get coffee and failed because they had no cups left. So the key here when you have your audio track down into the timeline is make sure you turn on your waveform. This is going to allow you to actually see the hits or the beats in the music. So when you see a spike, 
and you kind of go over on your keyboard, you can hear like a t I'll listen to it, I'll figure out where the beat drops, where I want that, you know, montage or whatever to start, and I will hit M on my keyboard and put a marker on the track so I can line up my very first clip with that marker and I know it starts on that beat. You can use your left and right arrows to go through and listen back to the track to find the beat, so as soon as you hear it, that, you're gonna wanna cut on that. Then I'll go through and cut my footage to different beats of the music, I'm using slow-mo clips here that I've shot in 60p, but I'm also not just keeping it to slow-mo. I'm kind of cutting it up. I'm kind of zooming in and out. I'm doing speed ramps. I'm using, you know, Peter McKinnon and Jesse Driftwood transitions just to keep it all interesting. While just having slow motion clips can look really nice, Sometimes it can get boring and repetitive. And so Peter and Jesse both have really good videos on these in-camera transitions. So I will leave the links to both of the videos in the description box. Highly encourage you guys to go watch it and add some new tricks to your arsenal. So here, for example, I used a shot of the barista pouring the milk into the latte, but the music does a really interesting thing where it sounds like it reversed, reversed, reversed? goes in reverse. It sounds like it goes in reverse. I actually took the clip and then reversed the clip to match the song a little bit better and then that makes that edit a little more dynamic. So here's an example of clips that I feel have been held too long to the music. So then if we take that edit, and then we add a couple more angles, a couple of really interesting cuts, and a couple of in-camera transitions. Now you get this. Essentially, once I'm finished my edit, I go through and kind of cut things up to the music. I'll switch my clips around a little bit. And once I'm kind of happy with it, I'll go back from the beginning and rewatch everything. And sometimes I find that I don't nail it right away. I had to go back and edit it again afterwards. So I would suggest go out there and shoot some B-roll, try to tell a little bit of a story, pick a cool track, and then try some of these techniques and also mix it up and get creative. Like you don't have to do anything that I did. You know, your edit does not have to have speed ramps in it or in camera transitions. It can have whatever you want, but this is how I do it. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Something is happening and there's a reason why there's a lot of things missing off my shelf. I'm gonna go finish my matcha latte without <laughs> sipping it like on the camera. Oh yeah! Alright, um, also guys, if you are not a part of our photo club yet, you want to join a community of creators and kind of learn and ask questions, uh, you can join our Facebook group, Pixel on Lens. I'll leave it in the description box below. Just make sure you answer the question so I know you're legit, that you actually want to be a part of the group. This is not another social media platform to follow us on. It's all about community participation and, you know, answering questions and collaborating with other people. So if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to to join i'd love to have you in the group with that said if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos we will see you on the next one oh let's see what's the forecast it's a stupid cloudy day and i ain't got shit to say about it well that's that's nice at least it's nine degrees celsius out oh, i'm uncomfortable okay i'm, s I'm actually sweating Mwah.